Southeast Asia's economy is thriving and its population is booming, but living here as a refugee is a struggle. Few countries in this region have refugee laws or have signed the 1951 Refugee Convention. Asylum seekers and refugees are often considered illegal aliens if they don't have valid documents. Unable to work or move freely, they become invisible within this urban jungle. Everybody loved their countries. Nobody wants to come become asylum. When we talk about urban refugees, you know, people are exposed to problems that most of us cannot comprehend. You're in a country which is foreign to you. You are in a country whose culture you don't know. You are illegal, you are invisible. You've got no rights to work. You've got no rights to exist. For years, Indonesia was a transit point for refugees en route to Australia. In 2009, Kudrat Ullah arrived in Jakarta from Pakistan. He phoned his family to let them know he was aboard a boat to Christmas Island. They never heard from him again. In 2015, desperation drove Kudrat Ullah's brother Liakat and his sister Rahila, their parents, brothers and sister, to take the same dangerous journey to Indonesia. When Lea Kat and his family approached the Indonesian authorities, they were taken to an immigration detention center. They were in detention for two and a half years. اصلاً راستش بگم ما خدایش خودم شخصاً احساس میکردم که ما انسان نیستم. In Thailand, unless they have valid visas, urban refugees also face a constant risk of arrest and prolonged detention. It's an added stress for those who arrive already suffering from trauma and depression. Khadija, her husband, and their six children escaped Afghanistan three years ago. She's haunted by what she left behind. Khadija's trauma was made worse by the uncertainty of not knowing her refugee status.
feeling vulnerable and powerless is a shared experience among urban refugees. <laughs> Mahaswari, her mother, and three children arrived as refugees from Sri Lanka. And the other girl, Engelode, Poiro, and a full face for Nakudan and a kidna, in a Nanga, a full custard potto. If a wrecking a cornella, my lamer in the good drug, a full little cup, and the Kala and the Kuran. Or why when they did, I'm putting Kiran at the divan. Mahaswari's husband left them shortly after arriving in Kuala Lumpur. I will get the material and not a good enough say the native material. Middle, father helping Gaila. And I won't allow pre pandra. Without long-term solutions for Mahaswari and her family, her children will grow up here with no access to formal education or legal work. Nal bini katche mis tarjal me. Nal naab bigar na bini ezmar anta naab bigar. To khadari chakal chima. This pura. Leah Cat is teaching Rahila the basics of sketching. Or charak bide khoa inzala ko na. Or charak bide inzala ko baz inzi jige chim bigar andazesh tha kujara maya. Chim marabar ko to khata kudam jige chima. While in detention, Leah Cat taught drawing to the other refugee children who were confined there. I just love to draw when I, mean, I draw and I forget everything. If I draw, so it makes decrease my depression and stress. Indonesian law provides an alternative to detention for people recognized as refugees. The focus uh, of the ECHO Fund is on accelerating the people who are uh, registered and recognized as refugees so they can get out of detention. Until their status is recognized, they can't get out of detention and into shelters. After two years, Leah Kat's family were granted refugee status and moved into community housing in Jakarta. <laughs> Refugee status has opened the door to healing for Khadija and her family feeling she has been heard and her troubles understood. It's 
Every week, Khadija attends a counseling session to address the issues that still cause her stress. Now you move yourself away from that situation already. You now you stay in the safer environment here in this asylum country. In Thailand, refugee status does not result in a legal right to stay. In Malaysia, UNHCR issued cards provide some level of protection to the refugees. However, they have no legal status or access to legal work. Their survival is dependent on informal work and donations. Mahaswari has been helping out at this tailoring shop since she arrived in Malaysia. Today she is training a new seamstress, a recently arrived migrant from India. EU aid helped Mahaswari with cash assistance to pay the bill she couldn't cover with her tailoring work. Not a day goes by that Leah Kat and his family don't miss their brother Kudratullah, who went missing nine years ago. Kudratullah is among the thousands who have disappeared in an attempt for a better life in Australia. <laughs> My brother's plan was to go to Australia at the time the, the way was open. I really miss him now. I wish he could be here. One, two, three, action. Despite all of the hardships they faced, Leah Kat's youngest brother Mudasir always finds a way to make them laugh. Action! Yeah.